Climate change is real. Humans are responsible for a substantial part of it. It's taking us in dangerous directions. Uh, the effects of climate change are generally thought of into three, in three major categories. Increasing temperature, altered precipitation patterns, and rising sea level. But those three things together do a variety of things around the planet. The ability to farm will change. The ability to live on the shores of the world's oceans will change. And of course, as the climate changes, the nature of crops will change hundreds of millions to billions of people who will have to move because of this, because most of human development is along coastlines. Global climate change is the most dangerous and the most difficult of all of the environmental problems that humans have ever caused and probably will ever cause. One of the very first places that I went to report on climate change was a tiny um, village in Alaska, an Inupiat village called Shishmaref. Uh, and the people in Shishmaref, people have lived in Shishmaref on a, in a seasonal way for hundreds of years. Uh, and this island is just disappearing, it's just eroding away. And that's happening uh, all around the Arctic. There are just islands uh, that are disappearing. I've seen change such as uh, um, the seasons that we hunt, the fish that we fish, the um, weather around us, you know, the weather's warmer, uh, the winters are shorter. I've seen probably close to 100 feet of land that's been eroded away on the north side of the island. The uh, ponds and lakes, uh, they're drying up. We subsist mostly on like seals, walrus, uh, fish, clams, you know, whatever we can get from the sea. When the fish are way up river and gone somewhere else, and then our, our permafrost nowadays when we bury our uh, subsistence food is very shallow now because the sun is so hot, the sun might heat up the sand and then spoil our food, you know, so that's what I'm worried about. Everything is changing very dramatically uh, for a lot of native communities in the Arctic. As you see Inuit villages being forced to be relocated away from the shoreline, you see a preview of the fate that is going to befall London and Washington DC and New York and Boston and Bombay as sea level goes up worldwide. Our ice conditions were uh much thicker and the hunting was good, the animals were close. We noticed um, the condition of the ice got much thinner year by year. One of the interesting things that people will tell you up now in the Arctic is they can't predict, they can't predict what's going on. The weather has become more unpredictable. The patterns of where you're going to find animals have become more unpredictable. One of the things that I remember from the past was to play traditional games in front of our community, you know, out front on the beach. But nowadays, the w waves are lapping right up against the bank. And it, um, it's taken, you know, a, it's taken away a part of our um, ch childhood. When I was young, springtime with my grandfather, even with my dad when we had dog teams, even though it was late spring, they hitch up the dogs and we just go across the lagoon. But we can tell it was safe by the coloration of the ice. Once it's blue, it's solid ice. If it's gray, it's not it's unsafe. Nowadays, you don't see this coloration of blue ice and it's all young ice, thin ice. Those changes that we see in the natural world are really uh, metaphors or, or models, if you will, of what will be happening to people. So we got a problem here that requires that we change things in quite fundamental ways, change the way we're supplying energy to the whole world's economy, and it requires that we start doing it soon before we have irreversibly committed ourselves to a trajectory that completely wrecks the world's climate. The biggest cause 
of the global climatic disruption is the buildup of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that comes principally from the combustion of fossil fuels and from the deforestation that is going on particularly in tropical forests around the world. Fossil fuels are essential to the world's energy supply. 80% of the world's energy supply is coming from those fossil fuels, and deforestation is deeply embedded in the process of development as it is occurring today. And so you've got causes of the global climatic disruption that are not easy to address. You have to address how we get the energy for civilization, and you have to address the whole pattern of economic development uh, in the tropics. People frequently say, but what I do, I'm one of many billions of people. Well, if many millions of those billions of people were to reduce their own individual energy use, the impact would be tremendous. It's not beyond our knowledge base to fix this problem. So, I mean, simply, you know, raising your uh, thermostat a couple of degrees in the summer and lowering it a couple of degrees in the winter can save a tremendous amount of energy. But uh, probably just as important is becoming politically active. As we pass over critical thresholds to warmer and warmer climates, it will become more and more difficult to reverse or even to lessen the impact of this global climate change. The effects of global warming will be widespread from uh, the poles to the equator, from coast to coast, and not just in remote areas, but people are really beginning to understand the way global warming will affect their everyday lives. The reality is, is that once we hit what some people refer to as a tipping point in climate change, the world becomes a dramatically dif different place very quickly. We're talking about changes on a, on a magnitude that, that are are really just off the charts. If we can muster a high enough level of understanding in the general public, if we can muster the political will in the nation's policymakers, we can take concrete steps that will in fact lessen the impact of global climate change as it's occurring. People need to understand that food does not materialize de novo on supermarket shelves. People need to understand that when you put the plug in the socket and electricity is there to run your computer, that it didn't get there by accident, that attached to that socket is a huge and complicated and expensive system, which today is pouring huge quantities of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and changing the climate. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that teachers have a responsibility to teach global warming. The students of today, today's high school students, are tomorrow's innovators. They are the people who are going to develop the new technologies, the new techniques, not only for adapting to global climate change, but for reducing the impact that it'll have on our world. You know, I think children, when they hear that global warming is threatening the survival of the polar bears, get uh, quite upset about that, actually, and uh, feel a connection on an emotional level that maybe adults no longer have. Political leaders will take action when the citizens don't give them a choice. And, you know, parents are going to listen to their kids. Uh, that's how recycling got, in, became a universal practice in the United States. I think it's important that children understand that their voices are heard. At a very young age, you can develop very important habits. But any minor step that kids can take actually will make a big difference. We know that when you're mobilizing to do something, Kids are often very, very influential in the way that we take steps. I'm very optimistic that we can solve global warming, that the U.S. will return to a position of leadership because we have the technological know-how, we have the creativity and the innovative spirit to tackle this problem. We are establishing the climate uh, that our grandchildren will inherit. We really don't have any more time to debate the issue or to waste in terms of putting solutions into place. As, as dangerous and difficult as the climate change problem is, there are a lot of things that can be done about it and they can be done without catastrophic costs, without unaffordable economic costs, without massive changes in the way we live. We hope to pass on our traditions 
to our uh, younger generations and generations to come. Mm -hmm.